Good morning, everyone. It's October 29th, 2016. It's getting close to Halloween, getting close to uh, getting it out of October and into November. The elections are, what, 11 days away. I think the markets are trading sideways. Uh, as we get there, we've had some interesting earnings. We've had big earnings from some and disappointing from others. Um, let's get this video going. Uh, we're going to talk about the downside of covered call writing. A lot of my videos talk about uh, how to manage a covered call, uh, the benefits of a covered call, all these great things, but there are downside risks. And we're going to talk about that because I found myself in that situation this week and I'm still carrying the bag. Before we start, I want you to Google corepositiontrading.com. I want you to see my blog. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you'll see that I'm writing some things. Um, uh, you know, I, I write about my Whirlpool uh, trade for which I'm getting kicked in the marbles still. Trying to mitigate some losses there with writing covered calls. And it's going all right because Whirlpool's not going to fall off the table. I uh, just have to wait it out. But I also have to just keep with my plan and execute the plan. Okay? Uh, we don't win them all, but... Uh, the ones we lose, we want to mitigate the losses, and we can do that with covered call writing. I want you to go, uh, you're at my YouTube page, so let's go ahead right now and please subscribe, okay? I want you to get all my videos. Uh, if you are trying to learn covered call writing, you want to build confidence before you do a trade, and you want to learn all the intricacies of covered call writing, you want to subscribe to my channel because I write about all of the things that interest me and, and affect me. And um, I, I, I have found uh, through my blog and my video posts that people are interested in uh, all kinds of things like the dangers of uh, owning covered calls through earnings, uh, weekly, how we can generate weekly income, you know, how we use covered call writing to uh, reduce our dollar cost average. And I am not shy. I always like to tell when I'm winning, losing, uh, making good decisions, making bad decisions, because with me, uh, you're just getting uh, a look into my world. Um, I, I don't get paid to do this. I love to teach. So I want you to subscribe. I want you to let other people know. Just tell them to Google core position trading. That's all I have to do, core position trading. So let's get this going. Sorry about the long introduction. So this week, I, uh, I watched a video. And this guy is great. Uh, his name is uh, Chuck Hughes. And um, he, he talks about how, you know, through writing weekly covered call options, he generated, you know, cash on cash, 120% year over year. And I get that. I see how that can happen. You know, you make a, you make a weekly covered call trade, you make 1%, 2%, you do that every week. Cash on cash, sure, you can generate double digit returns that blow away the market, okay? This guy, he, for, if you believe what he says, I mean, I, and I did, I mean, he's showing returns of $750,000 a year just writing covered call uh, through his retirement. So he has a lot of shares and he's, he's muscling up and he's using them, okay? One thing, one thing he talked about was using um, a highly risky uh, stock to do this, an ETF, and I'll tell you, uh, this begins sort of my swift kick in the marbles using his idea for a quick 200 share, one to two week covered call of my own because the premiums were nice and juicy. And boy, I'll tell you, I went against everything I talk about. And I've already been criticized from my buddies on this because I picked uh, TNA, which uh, TNA is a... Uh, Highly volatile, 3X small cap Russell ETF that plays weeklies. And this, this weekly uh, option candidate was paying $2 for just a 50 cent uh, or, or, yeah, a 50 cent move in the stock over a week. And my eyes just got too big, just too big. I went for it. I said, you know what? I'm going to risk this. Just 200 shares. I'm going to go ahead and buy 200 shares. I'm going to try this, okay? Pick up the $2 premium. Try to get to the week. Just collect that premium. We buy the option back like we talk about. But boy, you know, I did not do my due diligence. 
Um, like I said, my eyes got too big for what I was doing, and I put myself at risk. And now I'm trying to mitigate a trade, uh, I'm trying to mitigate losses on a trade that I probably should have never been in. You know, I, you know, since I've been going heavy at this, I've been picking Microsoft, Disney, uh, Nike, uh, Kraft Heinz. I've been winning, winning, winning. Okay? Every time I win, I love it. It's been the best trading strategy um, I've had since doing it. Just collecting those premiums, being the house. I love it. I talk about it all the time. I step out of my risk box and I go with TNA and I'm listening to this guy and and he has a great story. I'm not here to criticize him. This is all on me. So I find myself here. So let's talk about the downsides of cover call writing. Now, I need to credit this to uh, Alan Elman, the blue collar investor. Uh, if you, you, he don't pay me. I'm just saying that uh, because I got to credit him. Uh, if you go to YouTube and type in blue collar investor, you'll see that Alan is, has been doing this for years and he, knows what he's doing and to say that I, i'm not, he's not a mentor to me but definitely i watched his videos over the over my period of learning and and drew a lot of knowledge from what he had to say and the one one thing that he talks about in his disadvantages of writing covered calls he has four things but the number one that we we rarely talk about that's out there it's the white elephant in the room is if you buy a stock Write the covered call with no down, with, with no, uh, let's say, effort to put in a stop loss, uh, mitigating your loss with a stop loss. The stock can go down, and you're stuck holding the stock. Yeah, you got your covered call, you have your premium, but the stock is falling, and you are losing real money. Okay, the idea is that you. You know, the idea is this, you write, you buy a stock, you write the covered call, you make, let's say, 3%. Well, the idea is then you mitigate a loss by then putting in a stop loss of 3% below your price. You have what they call downside risk protection. But do we all do that? I don't. You know, I don't. So with that said, if you own a stock, you write a covered call, you own the downside risk because as the stock falls, that covered call option will not be exercised. He, that person will not buy your shares cheaper and you're stuck holding the stock. So with that said, you really have to understand that you own a stock, you own it. That's why I always say own stocks that you can go to sleep at night. Okay, because at the end of the day, if it falls, you own it. Well, here I am with TNA, and uh, I, you know I feel comfortable because TNA is a Russell 2000, and and it's a, basically a bet on the overall markets going higher or lower. I'm not betting on a sector. So at the end of the day, it's sort of one of these things where I just play it. So so again, TNA uh, very risky. Didn't like it, and I hope to get out of it soon. So real quick, let's finish this up. Um, with that said, I bought 200 shares right in here, okay? And I immediately wrote the 73. Notice where we're at. I bought it 70, I want to say 72.50. Then I, write, I wrote the 73 and got two bucks. You know, that's how my eyes got too big for this, and I really stepped out of my wrist box. Well, it didn't take but that session and the next session to the point where I'm down. And that option of $2 fell down to $0.63. Cents. And I decided to buy it back, put that money in my pocket, and then we're going to just write another covered call, which I did. And I bought 100 shares to reduce my dollar cost average. So I have now reduced my dollar cost average down to 71x. I'm not really, I don't have the numbers in front of me. And I wrote another call. I wrote the 71.50 for $0.76. Cents. And I'm holding it. Okay. So I'm trying to mitigate from this loss. You know, this thing fell like four bucks on the day I bought it. So it moves quick. You got to have risk tolerance or else you're just going to, you, you're just going to be stressed, anxiety. I'm a little bit beyond all that. So I just deal with it. But 
you know, it's one of these trades where I really, really suggest that you really do your research. You really understand your risk factor and try to mitigate losses and just understand that if you own it, you own it. And I own it. Bought at 72. It's now 68. And if it keeps going lower, I am stuck. OK, it didn't take long before I am down real hard cash. So with that said, I wrote a couple covered calls. I got about 520 bucks in my pocket. That's guaranteed. But I'm down about eight, I think, 850 bills. OK, so I am down on this trade. And hopefully it turns around. So I leave you with this. Um, don't let don't let the option premiums get too big. Because remember what I've said, if the premiums are bigger, usually there's more risk. And with more risk comes the volatility that something like this can happen. Okay? Um, so do your due diligence. Pick your winners. Play them. But if you find yourself in a bad spot, mitigate your losses by writing uh, covered calls and, and really uh, uh, try, to, try, to, try to make it a green trade. Hey, with that said... Hope you learned something today, and uh, until next time, I hope all your covered calls are profitable.